Good morning. It is Saturday. It is very sunny, disturbingly so. And it's going to be 20 degrees again today. It's going back down to sort of more normal temperatures for the, the time of year tomorrow. Although I don't know what normal temperatures are anymore, really. I'm just getting ready to go out and test my new socks. <laughs> my beginner socks, as they were called in the shop. I have no idea what the difference between normal socks, beginner socks or expert socks are. Uh, they're not feeling, they're, they're a bit spongier than I would like and they're not as grippy as I would like. But I think maybe I'm overthinking the socks issue. I'm also going to be walking, oh, I'm not going to get very far if they're attached with elastic, am I? I'm going to be walking in my new trainers. So Dan is on standby. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go and do a normal long walk like I normally would on a Saturday. And if Dan needs to come and rescue me, so be it. I think I was less nervous when I first went out in my Merrells because they're a brand that's known to me. And I feel like I bought these particular ones that I'm putting on now on a bit of a whim. Oh, stop talking about your trainers. I'll report back later. I don't think anyone cares that much. I've also got on my sort of more summery walking clothes. So I've gone for three quarter length leggings and my old Nike t-shirt. I think my Nike t-shirt is older than Phoebe and my leggings are about the same age as her. Before I go though, can I just show you this cat? We have taken to putting a duvet, the spare single duvet that we've got, we've taken to leaving it out so she can sleep on it because she is our Lord and Master and we will just do her bidding. So now she's quite comfortable, thank you very much. miles in one hour and eight minutes it's a bit funky. and then I had to get down to come and rescue me my shoes were good uh, about mile three I had to sit at a bus stop and put some plasters on the back of my heels because I could feel they were starting to rub and I really really didn't want to get blisters because I don't want anything to stop me walking uh, so, and that really helped and I loosened the laces but I had a lot of pressure around the outside of my little toe and there seems to be a lot of fabric there on this sock and I'm wondering if the pressure came from having too much sort of padding around the toe because the shoe itself is nice and wide and fits my foot really well I can like open up my toes really wide when they're in there and so I don't know where that came from it could also just be their knee and they just need breaking in but I think for just over four miles is quite good without too many problems so, uh, and then Dan came and got me because I thought if I did another, uh, it would have been another three miles, I might be pushing it. So I'm now home. I'm going to do my thumbnail of the vlog that's going up tonight. Then I'm going to have uh, something to eat. Someone in the comments the other day said, um, oh, what was it they said? It really made me laugh. Like, I either seem to be having a bath or eating. And I was like, yeah, that pretty much sums up my life if you put in driving children about and cleaning. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so, so yes, I'm gonna do more of the eating by having some lunch. Don't know what I'm gonna have. Probably nothing interesting or vloggable. Then, yeah, put my audio book in. Oh, it's not looking good at all for Anne Berlin. Obviously no spoilers because I think we all know what happens to her. She's in the tower and yeah, we are about two hours from the end of the book and it's just not going well for her. Poor Anne. It was all made up, wasn't it? I don't think, I think that, it, I think now we pretty much know that uh, 
what she was accused of was just completely made up. Can't imagine how she must have felt. It's, I think some, it's easy to sort of consign all these historical figures to like non, not real, like people in the past just being stories, but they were real people. Doesn't bear thinking about, does it? Anyway, I'm thoroughly enjoying the book. Actually, should we do a book update today? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish all the bits, stop talking, give myself some room on the vlog, and we'll do a reading update of everything I've been reading and listening to. So I've got lots to catch you up on. Hello. The light's a bit funny. It's five o'clock and the sun's round at the front of the house. I'm in the bedroom. Uh, you can probably just see my new lights dangling here because my new longer lights arrived and I've put them up on my bookshelves and I will show you, but I don't really like how I've done them, but I'll probably be faffing about with that for some time. Good job I like faffing about. So I've got some books here and I thought I'd just give you an update on what I've been reading either with my eyes or on audio. And I've just brought the curtain across a bit to stop the sun blaring at me. Um, it turned into quite the productive day. After I last spoke to you, uh, I, I was intending to have some lunch, but Dan decided to cut the grass. So I thought, well, while, while he's out in the garden cutting the grass, I might go out and just plant out the wild garlic that my mum had given me she'd given me four little wild garlic plants so I did that and then I thought well I'll just plant out the rose because we had to replace some fences uh, during the storms earlier in the year so I've got a nice new fence uh, in an area that really needed a nice new fence in order for me to plant a rose that's currently in a what was in a big kind of sack thing I wanted to put it in the ground so it would grow up the fence so I did that and that meant I had to kind of clear a whole area of a flower bed and then I tidied up and dealt with my stinking iris as well and then that meant I had to deal with a bit of compost and get that ready and then I ended up doing a bit of weeding and so on and then I had to put up some cat defense to stop them getting into my newly dug ground and pooping everywhere so I spent most of the, the better part of two hours doing that then I had a little bit of lunch and then all of a sudden I was in my craft cupboard in the bedroom tidying up, sorting it, getting it all nice and then faffing about with shelves. So I've got quite a lot done in a faffy sort of way and I really don't like gardening so if I suddenly start doing it and I'm into it and I'm not hating it I do tend to just let myself do it. That said I, I never regret doing it. So let's talk about some books. I'm going to go in order. I've got my story graph here and I'll just go in order of what I've read. So the first one is Tuesday Evenings with the Copeton Craft Resistance by Kate Solly. She is an Australian author and I don't think this is available to buy in the UK, uh, which is a shame because it's really, really, uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I was very lucky that I was sent this as a gift from a viewer in Australia. So thank you very much. That was around Christmas time, uh, which is why I'm lucky enough to have it. Um, I really enjoyed the characters uh, and it centres around, it starts with Meredith who is, she seems to ha have sight problems with uh, social interactions and reading situations in quite the right way. She's very stuck in her ways, she likes to, think to be in control of things uh, and she likes things to be a certain way and follow certain patterns but she also really loves crochet so she sets up a crochet collective, a crochet group, and puts flyers out and a, a, a motley group of people come together to join. So you've got all different ages and backgrounds. You've got Claire, who's a young uh, mum of young children. You've got Edith, who's an older lady. You've got several other characters from different backgrounds and ages. But the idea is that there's no knitting, only crochet, and no men, only women. But Edith's grandson, Luke, I'm doing this all from memory, <laughs> so I may miss things out. He comes along to drop her off and ends up staying for some reason and learning to crochet and he starts coming, which annoys Meredith, but then they kind of strike up a friendship and he's very outgoing and gregarious and that kind of rubs off on her a bit. And in the meantime, you've got Yasmin, uh, who's, who was my absolute hands down favourite character in this. She was feisty, she was funny, she was really well written, well rounded character. 
and she is pregnant with the, her first baby. She's Muslim and therefore she belongs to the Muslim community in Copeton. So when something happens with housing, they're sort of offering up some housing in the area to give to refugees um, of or, or something like that and at the same time there's a new mosque opening and this kind of brings out of the woodwork all these bigot, bigoted racist people who are really objecting to anything like that and um, how it's going to ruin their town and everything so they decide to change from the crochet collective to the crochet resistance and they start uh, counteracting some of the very public and physical things that the this sort of very um, vocal uh, group of people are doing around the town to make um, the Muslim community and the refugees coming in as well feel very very unwelcome and make their views known that they're not wanted and the crochet uh, the crochet resistance starts to counteract that with yarn bombing uh, and that was really good and what I really enjoyed about this was that the love for crochet runs from beginning to end all the way through the book it was it wasn't just in there as a kind of gimmicky um, you know it's got craft in the title to sell the book kind of thing it wasn't like that at all and it was just a really nice tale of people coming together and working together for a positive outcome and I really liked the message of this book and I really liked the characters as well and it was it was a good read I enjoyed it I don't know if I've got round to actually giving star ratings to any of these no I haven't so I would say I'm, I'm a little way out of now having read it so I would say thinking back to how much I remember and how I feel about it I think I'm gonna give it four stars I'll do that in a bit though if I start faffing about with my phone doing that I'll be here all day I then listened to this i'm going to put this up a bit i keep cutting my head off a bit don't i i then listened to the secret garden by francis hodgson burnett uh this is a classic one i'm sure you've probably heard of it there are many versions uh on audio um, available on audible and other places i listened to the one narrated by pearl hewitt 1911 it was first published so I would say I really enjoyed this book I did it as a buddy read with a group of people um, a group of my friends and we often choose a book and read it or listen to it all together so we all listened to this they all loved it I'd never read it before but I knew the story because I've seen like the film adaptations and so on I enjoyed it but it wasn't my favorite what I liked about it was the descriptions of the the garden and the flowers and the uh, the sort of way of life in Yorkshire. Uh, I liked that. There were some bits that made it show its age in terms of the uh, attitudes of the time, uh, which is purely down to the age of the book, but still sits uncomfortably with me. And I also found the characters of the children incredibly annoying I'm really sorry if this is a beloved book for anyone but I found the characters of the children incredible they were just so precocious and so disrespectful to people around them and and I know they were kind of on a journey both children children are coming through things and they haven't had the best experience with adults in their life and they're sort of learning how to be children and how to be friends and how to exist in the world and using nature in this garden uh, and growing things as a way to help them do that and in a sense start to sort of grow up um, I think I think that that's my understanding of it anyway and for those things I really enjoyed it but it wasn't the favorite thing that I've ever listened to I've given it 3.5 stars it was good but it just wasn't my total cup of tea then I read how to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey. Now, this was given to me in a bunch of books, uh, either at Christmas or my mum passed on a load of books to me. And for some reason, I just thought, I'm going to pick that up and read it. <laughs> it was really good. What I liked about it was it was unashamedly dark. So the story is from Grace's perspective. Grace is our main character. She has grown up with a single parent, her mother, who then died when she was, I think, 12 or 13 years old. At that point, she was brought up by her 
mother's best friend for a time and then she went to live with her best friend's parents and they brought her up through sort of her late teens. She finds out that her father is an incredibly uh, rich and privileged uh, man who lives really nearby and who was well aware of her existence but completely refused to help her mother in any way or make life any easier or acknowledge Grace as uh, a part of the family or deserving of anything. So she, d she decides that she is going to make him pay for that uh, by murdering every single member of his family uh, one by one until they're all gone and then he's going to be last so he can start to know something's amiss. Uh, but right at the start of the book we start off with the fact that she's, I think it says she's killed, she's killed six people uh, right, this isn't a spoiler, this is right in the first few pages of the book. She's killed six people and she's now in prison, but she's not in prison for having murdered any of those people. She didn't get caught. She's in prison for the murder of someone she didn't kill. And that's where the book starts. And then you go through and you see how she kills each member of his family and what happens and um and find out the situation i really loved it until the end because oh how can i say this without i don't want to give any spoilers oh, how can i say it without giving it away <sighs> something happens towards the end which means that the power that grace has had throughout the book of the things that she wants to carry out is kind of taken over by somebody else a male character and i feel like I'm pretty sure what the author was trying to do was show how Grace, as a character, had been overpowered by the male figures in her, in her I wouldn't say in her life, in her family, uh, for, and how that had affected and changed the course of her existence and, uh, and everything that she goes on to do. And even at the end of the book, that seemed, it, it, it feels that that is still happening. I hope I've said that without sounding like a completely a complete idiot and also not giving anything away. So I really like this book. I kind of wanted there to be a follow-up to it. I don't think there is. If there is, let me know. Uh, I did do a little Google to find out if there was going to be a follow-up to it. It felt like it could have a follow-up, but yeah, I enjoyed it. And yeah, 4.5 stars from me for that one. Now we've come to our first five-star read that I'm going to mention. Oh, and the sun is creeping round keep an eye on that because I don't want to suddenly look like I'm glowing. I'm rubbish at this. I'm so, I really hope this is in some way interesting and I'm making some kind of sense. I watch booktubers who are so eloquent and so good at remembering things about what they've read. I feel like I, I can't even remember what I had for breakfast, let alone what I read four weeks ago. But I do remember that I really, really love this next book. I listened to it. It's uh, the first book in the Six Tudor Queens series, Catherine of Aragon, The True Queen by Alison Weir. And it, the version I listened to was on Audible. And it was read by Maggie Mash. And I thought she did a really good job. It's a long old book. It's 20. 27 hours and 43 minutes it's a long one and I really really enjoyed it the reason I picked that picked it up to listen to is because I had heard uh, Victoria over what Victoria read talk so much about it it's an area a, a time in history a time in British history that I know very little about we did one unit on Tudors when I was at primary school and it consisted mainly of drawing their outfits so, and obviously we did the whole divorce, beheaded, died, divorce, beheaded, survived thing. You know, that, that's the kind of th thing I remember learning. But I, other than knowing Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, after that things get a little bit hazy and I didn't really know much of the story around it. This is historical fiction. So obviously it's based on things that are known in history, but it is a fiction. So... I enjoyed being immersed in this, the world of th this this time and the Tudors and uh, meeting a young King Henry VIII and finding him to be quite a likeable character in the beginning, but also just how amazingly strong Catherine of Aragon 
was in how she held with, to her convictions and stayed true to herself right to the end. Um, it was just, a, it was an amazing story spanning quite a few years and there were a lot of characters in it. There were a lot of political things going on and I thought actually they were integrated into the story in a way that didn't lose any interest because of it for me because that kind of lots of characters, loads of names, everyone's called Mary, everyone's called Catherine, everyone's called Henry, everyone's called Elizabeth. So a lot of characters with the same names and it could very easily get confusing and boring for, for my reading taste but it just didn't at all and I think that has to come down to the way A that it's been written and B how it was brought to life by the narration as well. I really enjoyed it, I gave it five stars and I will talk about the second book in a minute. So my next eyeball book, sorry if I keep moving around, it's hurting my back and my knees because I'm sitting on the floor. My next eyeball book after I finished How to Kill Your Family, which was quite dark and murderous, I thought I'm going to pick up something that's just easy and light. And I had a few of the Twisted Tale books. So Lilia, my oldest daughter, had a bit of a clear out recently. She'd read the Twisted Tale books and she was getting rid of them. And I've always been intrigued. So I've kept them. And I'm really glad that I did. I was so sceptical skeptical about this, even in the first few chapters. So this one is As Old As Time, and it is The Twisted Tale of Beauty and the Beast. It's written by Liz Braswell. And what it says on the front cover is, What of Belle's mother cursed the beast? So the idea is that you take the classic Disney version of the story, and then you um, change a couple of the key turning plot points. So in this one, uh, it's the fact that Belle's mother was the enchantress that enchanted the beast and also she touches the enchanted rose and that sets things off course as well. These are not spoilers, it says it on the back of the book, this is in the blurb, so you know going in what the twist is going to be, you just don't know how that's going to play out in the story. And I thought it was brilliant, at first, in the first few chapters it felt like reading a novel version of the Disney film, the classic animated Disney film. That's what it felt like. But it was interspersed with um, going back in time and hearing the story of Belle's father and mother and when Belle was born and what was going on in the kingdom for magical people particularly at that time. And it was, I, I just thought it was, it was the, the, world building if that's the right term around that I thought was really good it was really plausible it was really interesting and those were my favorite bits because they were completely different to what was going on in the in the main part of the story which is that familiar Beauty and the Beast story and then she touches the rose and then it all goes off kilter from that point on and it's a completely new story and I loved it it kept me coming back night after night really excited to read it it was easy to read I thought the characters were done really well it was funny and it had an unexpected ending as well I you know I, I couldn't ask for more I read it really quickly loved it uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to give it yet I think I'm going to give it 4.5 stars in fact my battery's flashing at me so I will change my battery and do that right now Okay, I've pulled the curtain a bit further across as well, but the light is creeping in. I just wish the sun would go behind a cloud or something. So next up, I listened to One Day by David Nichols. I had not really heard of this until people started talking about it because it's now a Netflix series. And I thought, oh, I'll give it a go. My mum had actually given me this really old battered copy uh, which I think her neighbour gave to her and I think someone else gave it to her neighbour and it arrived with me and I just fancied listening to it. I listened to it on Everand. It was narrated by Anna Bentink and she did a brilliant job and I love this book. I, I'm going to give it five stars. It, it, had, it was just, it was the story of two people uh, Emma and Dexter. Uh, it starts on the night of their graduation in 1998 and it covers their lives from that point, so the night of their graduation, they'll be in what, 21, 22, uh, and, and then follows their lives as they go through to their 
late 30s, early 40s. Can't quite remember where it gets up to in the story. And it's just about messy, ordinary lives. I can't, I don't know how else to describe it. They come in and act, they, they are always friends, but sometimes they come into each other's lives and sometimes they fall out and they're not in each other's lives. They have other, that they have relationships, marriages, children, careers, addictions, different problems, successes, failure, just such normal, ordinary, messy stuff. Dexter, throughout the whole thing, struggles with addiction. And you even get an insight into his relationship with his father and how that progresses over time. He becomes a bit of a minor celebrity. I don't, I don't know how to describe it other than to, uh, other than to repeat myself and say it is just about real life and real relationships. It felt very real. It felt beautifully written. I'm definitely going to read his new book, um, which don't tell him what I've already got, even though it doesn't come out until the 23rd of April, because I know someone that works in a bookshop. Lilia basically got a copy so she could bring it home and read it early um, and then they, they can do reviews for the Waterstones website uh, and she's very kindly passed it on to me because she knew how much I loved this one. So I'm definitely going to read more by David Nichols because I really enjoyed it and now I'm going to watch the Netflix series as well. Okay, what next? Oh my goodness, I then listened to None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. I think I listened to this book in two days. I got it from the library. I got it from Libby, I think. I had it on hold for a while and then it came available. And I thought, oh, great. It, it, it coincided just perfectly. It, like, it came available, I think, two days before I'd finished one day. So I started it straight away and I was just gripped. And I have to say that listening to it really added to it because the story is told so the story is two women what what are their names Josie so Josie has gone to a restaurant to celebrate her 45th birthday with her much older husband on the same night a uh, sort of semi celebrity podcaster comes in and she's very glamorous and she has lots and lots of friends and she's also celebrating her 45th birthday on the same day and they meet in the toilets and they sort of say oh we're birthday twins this is right at the beginning of the book this happens and then Josie kind of seeks her out she becomes a little bit not obsessed with but a little bit hung up on her because her life seems so much more successful and different and she kind of looks her up on social media finds out she's got this podcast and then approaches her and says I'm you know you speak to inspirational women and women who have made life changes on your podcast I think it'd be a really good idea if you interviewed me about my life because I'm about to make changes and that's a very simplified version of it. Uh, Alex agrees to this, they start to meet, and then Alex realises there's quite a lot more to Josie's life and past than it seems. In lots of ways, Alex makes some really strange decisions throughout the book about her relationship with Josie, but it came from a place of wanting to continue to make this podcast series and almost knowing that it's going to be successful. So she has a good motivation to make slightly iffy decisions about how much she lets Josie into her life. Uh, they, they're making the podcast as it goes on and then it becomes clear to Alex as it goes on that they're, she's kind of starting to make her own true crime podcast. That's as much as I'll say without giving any spoilers. But what makes it so good listening to it rather than reading it is that it the, the book is written from the perspective of Josie sometimes and from the perspective of Alex sometimes but it's also interspersed with future excerpts from a future documentary that has been made after you know the story and it has excerpts from the podcast that she's filmed it has interviews with key other characters throughout the story and they bring more and more people into those interviews as it goes on. And those excerpts from the podcast and those interviews are presented on, in audio form as though you are listening to a true crime documentary or podcast. It just made, it just levelled up <laughs> the whole experience of the story. I loved it. Like I said, I think I listened to it 
in two days straight. I could not stop. It really had me gripped. I loved it. Uh, as with all of the books that I'm talking about, do make sure you check content warnings uh, wherever you're looking for them because some of these books do have some really um, intense subjects. Uh, that takes us almost up to date because I finished a couple of days ago the next Twisted Tale, which is a whole new world. What if Aladdin had never found the lamp? So in this uh, one, uh, my, it's my favourite Disney animated film actually is Aladdin. We are in Agrabah and the film, the, the, the film, the story starts off as the Disney film does. He gets uh, thrown in the dungeon and then taken to the Cave of Wonders but by a mysterious old man to find the lamp who turns out to be Jafar. In the film story, what happens is he finds the lamp and he doesn't have time to pass it to the old man before he falls back into the Cave of Wonders. He then has the lamp and therefore has the genie and then the story goes on. In this version, he doesn't have the lamp, the old man gets it before he falls into the Cave of Wonders and becomes Jafar and then he becomes the most powerful sorcerer in the world. There is a body count in this, by the way. There is a quite brutal body count in this. It's, it doesn't hold back given that this is, I don't know what age it's written for, young adult maybe? I know Phoebe's read it and she really liked it. Um, yeah, it doesn't hold back on stuff like that, but Jasmine and Aladdin and a band of thieves, the street rats, have to work together to win Agrabah back, Agrabah back and defeat Jafar. So it gets quite tense towards the end where there's kind of, they're rousing up the people of Agrabah to go into battle with the undead army that Jafar has summoned. And it really was very, very good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very, very much. The next ones I've got to read are Reflection, which is the Twisted Tale of Milan. It's written by Elizabeth Lim. And then Once Upon a Dream, which is the Twisted Tale of, must be Cinderella, Once Once Upon a Dream? Oh no, that would be Sleeping Beauty, No, it? Back to Liz Braswell, and I have asked for my birthday for the Alice one. And then today, about an hour ago, I finished, whilst I was doing my faffing, the second Six Tudor Queen's book, Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn, the... what was her... What, what queen was she? A King's Obsession. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Obviously, we all know what happened to Anne Boleyn. You know it's coming. But it was well written and having only an hour ago finished it and listened to her go to her death and yeah it was yeah it was very affecting I very much enjoyed it that was an absolute other five star read for me I loved it and I'm going to listen to the next one I'm going to listen to something really light and fluffy to palate cleanse first and I with my eyeballs I am finally going to finish Agatha Christie's The Murder at the Vicarage. This is the first Miss Marple book. I bought it an absolute age ago to read in the bath, fell out of the habit of reading in the bath, so I've now got it next to my bed. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not that far from finishing. And the same people that I did a buddy read with the, um, for The Secret Garden, we're actually bu going to buddy read both this and the next one, which is uh, The Body in the Library. So I'm going to read this and I might... Uh, listen to The Body in the Library, which I believe is narrated by Stephanie Cole. It's going to be a long old vlog, this one, isn't it? But hopefully, uh, I know a lot of you asked for a bit of a reading update, so I hope you enjoyed that. I know I'm not an expert about talking about books. I hope I've done them justice. And let me know what you're reading. Let me know if you've read any of these and if you have different opinions. Is Books are like such a personal thing and I completely get how one person's five star read is another person's one star read it's just such a, a personal thing if you've enjoyed them let me know if you haven't maybe don't let me know <laughs> don't ruin it for me <laughs> and I'm gonna find a place to put actually I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep my twisted tails I'm gonna see if my friend wants to borrow them I'm gonna keep um, the Coped and Craft Resistance. These two are going to go to the charity shop. 
I think we'll leave it there. If I vlog any more, it's going to be way too long. So I'll see you tomorrow for Sunday, the best day of the week. Right now I'm going downstairs for dinner, cooked by Dan. He's doing burgers and salad. And we're going to watch Anton Deck's Saturday night takeaway, last in the series. See you tomorrow.